Welcome to the presentation, Writing the Literature Review. The very first step in understanding a literature review and all that goes into it is having a solid definition of what it means and what all is involved in writing one. You may have heard several different definitions for a lit review at this point, but it is basically a description of the literature that is relevant to a particular field or topic or your research question. Now, when we say literature, it's important to know what you can include and what you shouldn't be including. A literature review can survey scholarly articles from academic journals, scholarly books, prior research studies, and sometimes government reports. What you don't want to use at this point in your research might be encyclopedias, which are a little too general for a lit review and usually best when you want to get a general, less specific idea of a topic. You likely won't include interviews, so personal interviews that you might be using later on in a paper, or personal opinions, your own research, or popular sources like newspapers, magazines, or websites. Some of these may come into play later on in your paper, but the lit review is reserved for the writing and conclusions from scholars and researchers who have written on your topic. Research tells a story, and the existing literature helps us identify where we are in the story currently. It is then up to you, as you write your research paper, to continue that story with new research, methods, or perspectives. But you have to be familiar with the literature before you can move forward. There are several purposes for the Lit Review. It helps you identify gaps in current knowledge on your specific topic or research question. It sets the background on what has already been explored so far. It increases the breadth of knowledge that you have on your topic so that you are more fully aware of all the different pieces that may be coming into play. It also provides opposing viewpoints, informs you of debates or controversies that have arisen within your topic. It also helps you discover research methods and data that have been used to make conclusions regarding your topic. All of these together help you to have a better understanding of where and how your research fits into the scholarly conversation surrounding your topic. Now that we know a little more about what the literature review is, how do we get started actually writing it? The first step is, of course, research, finding the actual resources that you'll be using. This is time consuming. It's the research portion where you try to uncover all that has been said on your topic. You'll use your library databases to find articles and books. You'll create search statements within these databases, maybe meeting with a librarian to help you find resources, or meeting with your professor to make sure that you're on the right track. You'll want to collect literature relevant to your topic that fits within the focus, type, scope, and discipline that you've chosen. Read your sources carefully enough that you understand their main arguments and how they are relevant to your study. As you're doing this initial step and in making notes, try to describe, summarize, and identify the key concepts and theories. Don't copy from your source word for word. Even as you take notes, put it in your own words what the authors are saying about a specific topic. This will help you later on as you're synthesizing the information. Choose only sources that are most relevant to your own topic. You don't want to get bogged down by trying to bring in too much information. After you have done sufficient research, there are two questions that you can ask to help keep your literature review concise, on topic, and relevant. The first question, what have people said about my research question or related research questions. This first question helps you to first lay out the conversations and conclusions that your authors have come to. You're able to see if there are any gaps or pieces of information that have not yet been addressed in your topic or in the way that you plan to. You're looking at the substance of the articles and may be able to justify your research based on insufficient research done on the topic. The second question you should ask is how did the authors come to these conclusions? You are now honing in on the data they used or the methods they used. This allows you to see where their information came from, their methodology, and allows you to maybe replicate it with alterations based on your own research or come up with new methodology that would shed light on the topic in a different way. For instance, maybe the literature shows that many studies on early childhood literacy interventions focus on children in middle-class suburban areas. Conclusions about the intervention may be well supported, but you'd likely notice that a significant urban or impoverished population was left out, 
and this could justify research that supports a new, more inclusive intervention that could be utilized. After a thorough examination of your resources, you'll then start to put your literature review together. Synthesizing, combining separate elements to create a whole, will be important as you write. Within the literature review, synthesizing is taking different pieces of research from multiple sources to form a new picture. Synthesis goes further than just summarizing or comparing and contrasting different articles and resources. You aren't just listing and direct quoting different authors. You must make conclusions about the main themes you see emerging or critically evaluate how the authors came to their conclusions or determine where you see gaps that your research would fill and place you and your ideas within the scholarly conversation surrounding your topic. It's not just a list of summaries, but an integration of the information to create something new. As you become more familiar with the literature, you'll want to start thinking about the organizational structure of your lit review. Common organizational themes include chronological, which is ordering studies from oldest to most recent, which is useful when a field shows clear development over time. Topical, which groups studies by subject or theme. This is useful for a large body of literature that does not have one or two studies that stand out or a clear chronological development. Seminal study begins with one important study that is core to the field being explored. This is followed by later work and useful when one study is central in laying the groundwork for all future research. Debate emphasizes the conversation between scholars on opposing sides of an issue within a particular field. This is useful when there are clear opposing views on a topic. As you begin to organize and write your literature review, your sentences and your transitions are important in conveying the issues and how they relate to each other. On this slide, you'll see short examples of how you might think about structuring your sentences to show these relationships. Language for chronological. This subject was first studied by X, who found, in later years, Y modified X's work by, today, research by Z represents the current state of the field. Seminal. The most important research on this topic was the study by X in, following X's study, research extended on X's work and fell into two camps. Topical. Three important areas of this field have received attention, A, B, and C. A has been approached from two different perspectives. The most important developments in terms of B have been, C has also been an important area of study in this field. Debate. There have been two distinct approaches to this problem. The first model puts forth the theory. The second model argues that the first model is wrong for three reasons. The second model claims. Keep this language in mind as you begin to write because it helps you organize your thoughts and your language and more easily incorporate synthesis into your literature review. If you have any questions or need clarification, Contact your librarian for assistance. Thanks for watching.